بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم علی نبی محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد righteous conduct hiding and avoiding sins are all attributes that the believer strives to possess and especially during the holy month of Ramadan the Prophet وسلم, said ما من شيء أذكر في ميزان المؤمن يوم القيامة من حسن الخلق وإن الله يبغض الفاحشة بذي Prophet وسلم, said there isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of the believer than righteous deeds, good good manner, husn al And verily Allah hates sinful and wicked speech. Letting us know that we should have righteous conduct, we should strive our best to have good manners with one another. Watch our tongue, safeguard our tongues. In the Laha Yubhidu al Fahesh al Verily Allah hates sinful and wicked speech. And in various types of sinful and wicked speech, there is there's lying, as we mentioned. There is cursing other people. There's spreading namima and ghiba, you know, backbiting and slandering people. So there's so many bad things we can do with the tongue. Sometimes you wonder, what can we do that's good with our tongue? Of course, by speaking righteousness or keeping silent. And may Allah forgive us for our, our hurriedness and, and our haste in sometimes making judgments about others or not following up and trying to find the truth and spreading tales or plain outright lying. May Allah forgive us for all of our sins. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And this comes to the hadith which I want to mention here. An-Nawas ibn Sam'an radiyallahu ta'ala anhu An-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal Al-Birru husnu khulqi Wal-Ithmu ma haka fi nafsika Wa karahta an Yutali'a alayhi al-Nas Ruwahu Muslim In this hadith in Sahih Muslim the hadith, uh, hadith of Nawas, Nawas ibn, Nawas ibn Sam'an radiallahu ta'ala an, who said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said al-bir, you know, righteousness or piety is good manners. Look at that relationship there. Righteousness is good manners. Al-bir husnul khulq. Well, if and sin is what you feel uncomfortable in within yourself, and you hate that the people would find out about it, and that's collected in Muslim. We could write volumes about this hadith of the Prophet wasallam, but just from the vahir or the nas, and from our personal experience, we find many, many benefits from this hadith and that righteousness has to do with good manners so how is it a person could say that they are Salafi or not follow, or they're following the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or they are following the Madhab of the Salaf or the Minhaj of the Salaf and may Allah bless us to be of those people who follow the Madhab of the Salaf from Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. But how is it that we could avoid manners? That does not mean that if a person is from Ahlul Sunnah, 
but they have weaky man and they're bad in their manners that they're no longer from Ahl Sunnah. That's not what we're saying. But what we're saying is it's an integral part of being from Ahl Sunnah as well. That do not avoid having righteous manners. That because someone is from Ahl Sunnah, they should be the first and foremost of, amongst the people with righteous manners. But unfortunately, we find the opposite of that often with individuals. Wallahu Musta'an. May Allah forgive us. And sinfulness, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, is what is contained in your chest, meaning you have it within yourself, you feel discomfort, you know that it's wrong. And you would hate that the people would find out. And I think we're all aware of that. We don't need a lot of explanation on that. We know about those things that we feel uncomfortable with and about, that we do. They give us discomfort. And they... And we would hate for the people to find out about our sins. For example, the individual who openly, on one hand, appears to be on the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and perhaps they are, but yet their sinfulness prohibits them from doing righteousness or causes them to engage in many wicked sins that Allah hates. So then they're weak in Iman. For example, the brother or sister who is plagued or tested with drugs and alcohol. And may Allah protect us from those poisons. Some people are tested with that. They want good. But they do that sin in the, in the depths of the night. Maybe even they do lectures or they, 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 they go to lectures and they, they feel good at the time of the lecture, but they have a weakness. When they get home all by, by themselves, they drink a sip of alcohol or they get drunk or they smoke weed or they do whatever, whatever that is displeasing to Allah, showing that they have weaky men. And may Allah protect us from it and forgive us of our sins or the individual which tends to be a very dangerous sin that in my view and this is not a fatwa is such a serious and dangerous sin which the people from before us weren't quite plagued with in the same way which is pornography pornography can creep into every single home as one Jewish rabbi was describing he said it's not sufficient anymore to avoid television and this and that and the other because he said that when you close the door of your own daughter's room or what have you, it can become a whorehouse in there. Showing us that even the people who strive to be pious, strive to be humble, strive to be religious, whatever religious tradition they follow, that they're plagued with this. And this is even the case of the believers. that an individual can be plagued with the sickness. And it's an incredibly horrible sickness because it leads to zina. It leads to adultery and fornication. Because it's not sufficient that you're just gaining the sin of watching that poison which sticks in your mind. And there are also physical. I was speaking to one of our brothers who's a counselor who's telling me about the physical and mental effects of drugs and the mental and spiritual uh, mental effects and physical effects of pornography that it heightens certain dorphins or, or what have you uh, chemicals that are let off in your brain and so forth showing us it's an incredibly da uh, incredible danger that it affects you physically mentally and spiritually it drains you and it co it, it coerces you or encourages you to do adultery and fornication. And those are the kind of sins that you would never want anyone to find out about. That's the way sinfulness is. 
And this brings us back to that hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, letting us know that sinfulness, how do you know a sign of sinfulness? It's those things that you would hate the people to find out about and you feel uncomfortable in your heart about it. You feel the dirt on your, your, your covering your, the ran ala qulubi, ala, ala, ala qalbak. You feel the, the dirt and the black spot which increases by the more sin you do on your heart. It's a covering on the heart that an individual could be on righteousness one minute and the next minute they could go and look at the muharram and engage in that and cloud them, their, their vision, cloud their hearts, take from their spirituality, reduce their iman, their faith. And we ask Allah the Almighty to help us to increase our faith during the holy month of Ramadan and to be of those who gain taqwa and come closer to Allah. And may Allah forgive us of all of our sins and bless us with those deeds which will please Him. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.